welcome to the Saturday Evening Shit Show. Today I'm going to be looking at the 88 through 01 CK pickups and the other SUVs that branched off from this platform. Now, this is a very special show for me, and the reason why is because an 88 Silverado was the first car of yours truly. Owning that particular pickup set me on a 15 year course of self torture and just brutal punishment of this career that I've got going on here. So let's take a look. So yeah, these trucks started out in an era where engine choices were key. There are a buttload of different motors you can get for these trucks. Uh, 4.3 V6, 5.0 V8, 5.7 V8, 7.4 liter big 454. You got 6.5 liter diesel, which is what this piece of shit is. Just a whole bunch of different ones, and I gotta go through all of them, so this might be a kind of a long video. So, from 88 to 95, the majority of the trucks came with throttle body injection. It was underpowered and got shit gas mileage and fairly reliable, I'd say, but they did have problems. Uh, Biggest thing is the injectors could be swapped and the car will run like total ass on that. It took me a solid week to chase that down on one truck that I had. So by far the three most common motors you're going to find on this truck is going to be the 4.3 liter, the 5.7 liter, and the 6.5 liter diesel. The 4.3 liter is the only V6 I can recommend for a truck. It had good power, it was like 200 horsepower and I think 240 pound feet of torque. It was a really good V6 motor and it's basically just a short and 350. The 5.7 liter is the workhorse, you know, it's been around for years, blah, 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 you know all about it. Pretty reliable, especially in throttle body form. The 6.5 liter is known for having a whole shit ton of problems to go with it, but I find them to be decently reliable if you do some just basic mods to them. They are underpowered as shit, though, you got to watch out for that. So in 96, they switched from a throttle body injector to what they called the spider injector. Now, why did they name it the Spider Injector? It's like they were standing around the office and they wanted the most terrifying thing they could possibly find and they said, hey, let's name our injectors after it. It's a central unit that looks damn much like a spider and it's got these fuel injector arms that come off from it. If you watch my how-to videos, you've seen me replace them, you've seen me bitch about them. They're very common to go bad on these trucks. They get you in with misfires and stumbling and all kinds of other fucking bullshit and they run about three to five hundred dollars to change and that's just for the parts for labor to install it yeah it's a great a son of a bitch blah 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 it's gonna cost you a lot of money so let's take a look at the 6.5 liter detroit engine it's a turbo diesel and it's well known for having problems out the ass they're underpowered turds 190 horsepower and 440 pound feet of torque but believe me when i say it don't feel like it's got that much the single biggest problem you're going to find on this motor is what they call the pump mounted driver. They mount it in a shitty location, it's mounted on the injection pump, drives the fuel injectors, when it goes out you get a no start condition. Now, they have addressed this problem in the aftermarket with a heat sink that you relocate and mount in front of the radiator. It's a smart thing to do, there you go, I've never had a problem with it on this truck. So the second biggest thing you're going to have is the wiring. It crumbles real easy, it shorts out, and it gives you all kinds of hell. And I hate wiring worse than I hate anything on a motor. There's a relay panel behind there, and that's where you find the biggest issue. Again, look for it. If you see crumbling wire, run like your hair is on fire. So the last big problem with the 6.5 liter is the harmonic balancer. Uh, you want to take a look at it and if you see uh, there's a little rubber ring around it, if you see that rubber bulging or cracking, odds are you're going to have to replace it. It's fairly damn expensive and yeah, yeah, you know the rest. One last issue to look at is the cooling system. The uh, cooling system on these trucks needs to be replaced every five years, otherwise you get overheating problems and don't you dare fucking believe the gauge when it says 260 is hot. If it gets over 210, shut it down or you're going to be dealing with blown head gaskets and you don't even want to talk about that. So your transmission options are going to be a 4L60E 4-speed automatic, a 5-speed manual, or the 4L80E 4-speed automatic. Now the 4L60E is well known with its problems in these trucks. They last about 148,000 miles on the nose and then they start losing gears. Shit happens, gotta change it out. Pretty cheap transmission from a junkyard these days. Not that bad to rebuild them either. 
Now the 4L80E can be found on certain 4x4 half tons and certain uh, 2500 and 3500 trucks. It's basically an overdrive uh, turbo 400. It's a really strong transmission for these particular motors. That's the one I really aim for. It's the one I got in this truck. The 4x4 units can either be a manual transfer case or an automatic transfer case. I prefer the manual, but the automatic isn't that bad. The uh, solenoids on the transmission case can go out, or on the transfer case can go out, but not that difficult. So 88 through 94 is going to have this particular interior in it. It's a rock solid design, but it does have quirks. Ah, one of your biggest areas, and you can see my fix, is the rheostat. Basically, uh, the connections start getting bad in here and you lose all your dash lights. Real useful. Cardboard mod. Works great. <laughs> this is the original tape deck. It's mounted in a confusing as shit location and the fucker never works. Nine times out of ten, somebody's going to have an aftermarket unit placed there. Now, if you got an aftermarket unit placed there, well, I'm not that tall. Five foot ten. I got the seat where I need it. I'm sitting back and this is as far as I can reach right here. Yeah, that fucking blows. The most logical place would be to put an aftermarket unit here where the stock head unit is. But as you can see, it's a proprietary design. Hell, there ain't even any guts behind there. It's mounted way the fuck up under there under the dash. Sucks. Heater cores are pretty common to go out, but they're also very easy to replace. Uh, look for an upcoming how-to because guess what I have to do on this truck? Last big thing you got to look for is the gauges. They're, I guess they're not shielded behind there, but all kinds of weird shit can happen. You start it, you give it the gas, and the gauges will just jump around however the fuck they want to. Turn the uh, turn signal on and watch the speedometer jump. Don't know what the fuck it is, don't even bother. Oh, and the uh, park lever never points to the right spot. My, how the Silverado changed. Now I'm looking at a 2000 Cadillac Escalade. It's based on the same platform as that truck over there, but this one has the more modern interior and a couple other features I want to show you. Let's get started. Welcome to the more modern interior. Uh, this one's uh, a secondary refresh that has the second airbag, but for the most part, these trucks all look the same inside. The first big thing you're going to have to notice is the door handle. This son of a bitch always breaks off. It is so fucking common for that damn thing to break. You can go up to AutoZone and get a replacement. They have them in the help section. They're not going to be the right color, but yeah, they have them. Now, you hop into this truck, you shut the door, and you go, oh, fuck, that's broke. Oh, fuck, that one's broke too. Oh, dear God, I'm going to die inside of a fucking Cadillac Escalade. This is bullshit. Try to roll down the window. Oh, thank God the window rolls down. So yeah, this is the Escalade, the badass, the pinnacle of their luxury cars. Let's see what they got. We got heated leather seats. We got Delco Bose CD player, tape deck, CD changer. We got rear air, Homelink, OnStar, DVD player, VHS player, loaded to the hilt with luxury. And every single electronic doodad in this car has one thing in common. They don't fucking work. Not a single goddamn piece of this car works inside. Yeah, welcome to the pinnacle of luxury. Now let's stick the key in and crank the ignition. Yeah, 260 mildly annoyed horsepower. 330 pound-feet of torque to get its big 5,000 pound ass rolling. Zero to 60 in 10 long seconds. Let's look at the sweeping gauge cluster. The patented GM service engine soon light. The odometer that's broke and you know rolls around whenever it damn well feels like it. The fuck? Is the gas gauge nervous? Why is it jiggling around? Is it scared shitless I'm gonna send it to the junkyard and maybe to the crusher? Nope, that's the sending unit in the tank. It's a silver electrode that gets corroded by gasoline. Real bright. Now let's look at one of the biggest flaws on these trucks and there ain't a single solitary fucking thing you can do to fix it. 
it's the brakes on the non heavy duty trucks watch this if you will brakes what are you doing brakes stop stop all the way to the floor they're soft they're spongy and they do this on everyone that does not have the heavy duty brakes it is a scary son of a bitch so another big flaw you're gonna find on these trucks is in the steering yeah I'm not moving the wheels while doing this get real used to going down the road like this back and forth and nothing's happening yeah that's safety if I've ever seen it so yeah let me paint you a picture you're driving down the road you're going on a road trip your tunes are jamming your girlfriend's in the passenger seat you're having a grand old time and it starts to cloud up a little bit on you and you think yeah no big deal I got all-wheel drive it's a safe truck really starts pouring on you now you need your windshield wipers you got them on high Wumpa, 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 wump. What? Yeah, your wiper just stopped. <laughs> Ain't that a bitch? Yeah, the windshield wiper motor has a connection, and this connection is soldered. Now, over time, from heat and vibration and current draw through it, the solder starts to crack up. Whenever that happens, your windshield wipers die. Yeah, that's a pants shit and fear moment when that happens. You pull over, you jiggle it, starts wiping again. All right, good to go. Go down the road, half a mile later, wumpa, 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 wump. Rinse, repeat, cuss. So yeah, if you got the CK pickup or the Escalade or a Tahoe or a Suburban, the windshield wiper motor's right there. It's easy enough to get to. You swing into your local auto parts store, you pick one up, you change it out in the parking lot, and all's well. Now, if you have a Chevrolet van version, which I do, then you're going to have a whole different set of problems. Because the wiper motor, nah, it ain't under the hood. It's under the dash. Way the fuck up under there. The only way you're going to get to that rat bastard is to break your arm in about three different places and have swivels installed. Yeah, that's orientation day at Chevrolet. Break your arm, put in swivels, because you're going to need them. So yeah, I'm going to show you what you got to look forward to for working on a van. <laughs> uh, hello! <laughs> yep, that's the sucking void that is the front of it. Now, there is a dog cage inside that you can remove, but yeah, it's still a bitch to get to just about anything. There's your AC compressor, uh, thermostat, and your alternator, and yeah, you thought an F-body was bad. This fucking blows. Are we starting to see why I'm so angry all the time? Yeah, I've been working on this shit for 15 years now. Welcome to my world. Yeah, overall, the trucks aren't that bad. I make them look like shit, but, you know, that's kind of my job. They're fairly easy to work on. You got a lot of engine bay room. They do have some of the worst fucking designs I've ever seen. I mean, it's like the engineers were drunk when they were making this shit up. I like these better than I do the Fords from this era, mainly because the engines and transmissions are stronger. But yeah, you want to watch out for some of these known issues before you go plunking down three to five grand on one of these. Thanks for watching. Hope it helps.